I suppose my question is, is there any is there any remedy for this idea that, you know, I'm almost I'm 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 almost more afraid or more attached to bad things, or I'm almost I'm afraid I'm more attached to my former self, or I'm more afraid of my future self or my becoming self that is arguably better, more more able to help others. No checking, no holding, no making, no attaching. If you begin to look at those things which pull us out and make us feel separate, checking, holding, making, attaching, and can, if we really look at those things, they'll pull us back into the present moment. Or simply ask yourself the question, who is it that's concerned about their changing identity? What am I? What is my true nature? We don't know. Yeah. So why not honor not knowing a little bit rather than getting caught in the mental drama and the concerns about what we're going to be, what we're not going to be, what we're going to accomplish what we're letting go of. Year, years, years ago, I took a class called the Illusion Conclusion. Uh, and uh, the premise that the teacher took was essentially that we're very patterned human beings. Those patterns run very deep in each one of us. In fact, the patterns are in the way we think. We think in a particular pattern. And most of us have the same kinds of thoughts go around and around and around. Yeah. And the interesting thing about those patterns that we make for ourselves is that they're self-reinforcing. What that means is, if you get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, oh, I don't look so good today. What? Geez, I'm starting to age a little bit. This, I, this is not good at all. I, I, I look awful. Okay. The next morning, you look in the mirror, get up in the morning, go over to the mirror, look in the mirror, and again, Oh shit, man! I, what is wrong with me? I, I just, I, I, there used to be a brightness there. What happened to that? You know what? No, no, my skin is like, okay. Then the next morning, you're more likely to do the same thing, and the next morning, more likely to do the same thing, and the next morning to do the same thing. Yeah. And a pattern appears. Now, the thing about us is we're rather complex animals. And so the number of patterns that we're running all the time is really pretty extensive. But we're running the same patterns over and over and over again. Okay. Now, as those patterns, as you get older, like, like me, if you don't do anything about those patterns, they will control every aspect of your life. You don't, you're not in the driver's seat, your patterns are. And even if you're 20 or 21 or 22, those patterns are strong. Okay. So what do you do about that? You know what, what? Well, there's only one thing you can do which is, uh, in fact, uh, the greatest gift of meditation, which is stop. Just stop. Just 10, 15 minutes every day, stop. Half an hour a day, stop. 
just go down into the ballast, feel the breath come in and the breath go out. Then as you sit, those patterns, all that undigested stuff, it bubbles up by itself and you see it. And if you see it again and again and again and again, after a while, you can let go of it. And if you can really let go of it, then in the present moment, which we all have flashes of, we can be awake with each other. We can be present with each other. We can meet each other's eyes and we can meet each other's experience. It's really one of the great gifts of meditation. If you don't see your patterns, then you can never let go of them. So first seeing, then letting them dissipate, called meditation. Then next, using your patterns to be of service to other human beings and all sentient beings. That's in a sense, that's the human root. Perceiving, letting go, then using them. The difference is you're using them instead of having them use you. <laughs>